recordings of the previous talks are available either on our website, that's unlab.us, or on our YouTube channel. Um, and so actually all the talks up through yesterday are up there already. So please check those out. There's a lot of interesting things. So, all right, well, we might as well get started. We're up to 70 participants and I'm sure a few more people will come in. And I wanted to uh, welcome all the, the new folks who are joining us for the first time and want to also welcome and thank all the folks that are, are coming back and uh, have been with us throughout the week. Uh, I think we've had some really forward moving talks um, you know, all, all focused on this thought that there are new things to be discovered and new ways of generating energy and forces that uh, we haven't, haven't been able to harness yet or understand. And, uh, you know, all the talks were wonderful. Uh, I, I don't know if I can highlight any of them, but, you know, a, a few that stick in my mind are on the first day, uh, Jim Jim Jeski talked about the emergent emergency and the fact that there are going to be dragon kings in the climate that will really affect us. And the first day was really all about that, about our need to take action now and need to be bolder and need to um, really drive forward this out of the box discovery. And then on the the second day was focused on more on the fundamental nature of light and electromagnetics and several good talks that day. Uh, Sean Wee Fan from Stanford talked about non-reciprocal materials and how you can use that to get to the ultimate limit in uh, solar cells, which is 93% efficiency, and also the ability to generate uh, a thermal supercurrent, just like you have a supercurrent in a in a superconductor, a, su a thermal super uh, supercurrent that would continue propagating continuously. Uh, that's using non-reciprocal materials. Does not break the second law, uh, but is because uh, you can't do work with it. But it persistently flows. And then on uh, Wednesday. Uh, I mean, Thursday, we went and talked about vacuum fluctuations and the possibility of harnessing energy and forces from vacuum fluctuations. So, um, you know, if you want to listen to my talk about that, we talked about some potential approaches, uh, including using a resonant tunneling diode to generate fairly large forces. And again, that doesn't break the conservation of energy because you put energy into the the diode, but we're able to, we predict we're generating fairly large forces from that. And then, um, you know, on, on uh, I guess it was Wednesday as well, we had Wolfram talk about his new theory. And that was a very exciting, interesting discussion of his new theory of physics. And uh, we included all the discussion in the video online. So that, that's something worth checking out. And then yesterday, um, you know, we talked both about testing of some of these advanced concepts, uh, both from Martin, who gave a wonderful talk, and George Hathaway about their experiences and trying to test some of these breakthrough devices and all the potential pitfalls there. You'll hear from George again today. And, um, you know, and then we ended the day with uh, Raymond Chow talking about his transduction between electromagnetics and gravity that would enable a gravity wave communication. So that's just a few of the highlights through the week. Um, again, I encourage you to look at the videos if you weren't able to join in to the talks. And so today, we're really honored and happy to be uh, in collaboration with the so Society for Scientific Exploration and their symposium on uh, potential uh, breaking of the second law of thermodynamics. So lots of very interesting talks and some maybe very practical devices for harvesting energy. So um, with that, uh, you know, it's hosted by Garrett Modell and uh, Daniel Sheehan. So um, please, uh, Garrett, uh, thank you again. 
Thank you, Charles. Uh, so first of all, thanks to, to Charles for, for hosting this Zoom and just uh, connecting us with uh, also the, the APE uh, workshop. Uh, so we are today talking about challenges to the second law. And as you all know, there are all sorts of claims for various sorts of systems and uh, engines that seem to work and produce energy perpetually or under strange circumstances. And so uh, the scientific community has been very skeptical of this. And there, a, a lot of that skepticism is well placed. On the other hand, uh, we're probably too skeptical. Um, and we need to be looking uh, closely at what the evidence is telling us. And the evidence is actually uh, becoming quite clear that uh, there are some very interesting systems that do challenge what we had believed. So today we'll be hearing about some of those concepts and systems. And then at the panel discussion, which is taking place at 5 p.m. today, we'll talk about this skepticism versus gullibility and uh, really where we ought to be falling on all of this. Uh, so just a few practical matters. Uh, during all of the talks, please mute your microphone because uh, otherwise uh, your, your uh, um, sirens nearby will all go onto the, onto the talks. Uh, Charles is recording each of the talks and they will be available on Charles's Unlab website and YouTube. And also uh, we at the SSE will be uh, posting the, this today's version part, which is uh, the SSE symposium. Um, after each talk, uh, there will be, I hope, uh, well, I'm sure there will be discussion and questions and so on. Please put your hands up uh, for the questions and uh, you can either physically put your hand up or use the, the uh, hands up on the uh, chat. And Charles and I will be monitoring both of those and uh, uh, we'll try to uh, respond to your questions or call, call you for your questions. Um, the, I, I will be limiting uh, the time for each question because uh, it would be nice to try to get as many different views as possible. Okay. So let's talk about the first talk. So the first talk is called Beyond the Thermodynamic Limit, a Template for Second Law Challenges. And uh, this is a talk given by uh, Daniel Sheehan, a professor at the University of San Diego. And we know Daniel well. Uh, his background is in chemistry at Santa Clara University and physics at uh, UC Irvine. And he's been at uh, UC, University of San Diego since 1989. Uh, he's actually been looking at some fairly diverse areas. His uh, work has been in uh, planetary formation, plasma physics, nanotechnology, the physics of time, and tests of the uh, second law of thermodynamics. If uh, we think of the second law of thermodynamics as uh, being Moby Dick, in that case, Daniel is Captain Ahab. Uh, but there's a difference uh, because uh, Captain Ahab had a wooden leg, Daniel does not. And also, uh, Daniel, uh, they're actually maybe seeing the, de the, uh, the defeat or at least the greater understanding of the second law of thermodynamics. 